Hello friends, welcome back to this session of innovation in marketing, wherein we were talking about this structure and the key elements of wherein we can you know look for innovation in marketing. We have to start somewhere and I would be taking you towards the scope of these elements into the complete value chain of products and services, which is the ultimate goal. I want that my learners and marketers and future marketers, they should be looking at products with a complete value chain perspective and elements of value chain for developing the thought of innovation in due course of time. And I have been uh, suggesting you that keep reading about the concept of value chain with the perspective of finding scope for innovation there, not just value, scope for innovation. What are the key elements? Many times we have heard wonderful stories like you know IKEA furnitures generated value in terms of generating rectangular boxes as packaging. But then what innovation they have gone for to do that, that is the point of concern and then what kind of disposable packaging, how packaging industry can think in terms of IKEA furniture being a very large buyer and they could have supported IKEA furnitures in going for an environment friendly packaging material and also improvising upon the dimensions which IKEA would have thought of in terms of as far as the whole structure goes. Could they think beyond that? Are they thinking beyond that? And if they are not trying to do that, they are happy with that, then are their suppliers thinking about it? And why should not their suppliers be thinking about that? A very important thought process. Why petroleum industry has not been thinking in terms of automotives having you know larger averages or, or per liter output and so on. Is it not the job of everyone associated with whole of this value chain to think about the ultimate benefit of this society and customer and so on? It is and that is how the business grows. If it is just a buyer seller relationship B 2 B or B 2 C then might end up somewhere wherein we feel that we have gained from this transaction, but we might not feel benefited at the end of the day. And that is the whole point. You go to a hospital, you come back, you feel that yes, things have been attended to, but are we feeling benefited? That is the whole point. And if we want all our prospective customers and customers to feel benefited, the patients. So, should we be going for that kind of a perspective around? I have been associated with one of a PhD thesis which has been worked upon in due course of time wherein patient centered care and patient relationship management and then beneficiary relationship management has been the culmination of that research which is about to be defended very soon by one of the scholars at IIT Roorkee. And that is how you know we have been looking at the complete healthcare industry, healthcare operations with that kind of a perspective. I would be revealing some of the results later on uh, because that still is under publication and that has been worked upon and it has been deliberated upon. So, at this moment I would not be able to uh, you know talk about much. So, that is the perspective as far as the whole scenario goes. Now, let us take one or two examples and uh, you know this will break the ice. Uh, this, this initial example uh, we have picked it uh, up from you know text the reference would be given to you. So, you know this marketing manager at digital equipment corporation Mr. Gary sent an email in 1978 and that was considered to be probably the first marketing email as the text says and this was a new innovation in terms of communication as far as marketing goes. You know that is one key point which explains the scope for innovation. So, technologically emails are coming the uh, you know coming our way and we are using for a, uh, those for a particular kind of a purpose. But here we have to look for that how to rationalize that communication development which we are making. It is if it is just a mode of communication which we are using to the benefit of uh, two people associated with each other then might not solve the purpose. We have to look beyond as far as the whole scenario goes. 
Augmented reality was used by Adidas in 2018 for the launch of Derupt sneaker range, uh, provided an exciting new unboxing experience for customers and so on. And adapting the AR features used by companies like IKEA to show their product in real life, in a virtual world, Adidas was able to bring in innovation to a uh, new industry. Today, tourism also, you know, people, uh, tourist companies, tourism companies, they are focusing upon augmented reality and uh, that, that is how they are attracting people for actual spots and even some, uh, some of the companies they are focusing upon only, you know, virtual tours and those kind of things. So, so many sites they have come up and they are trying to put up, uh, you know, taking people if they do not actually want to go, elders or people who cannot travel or people or very, very young children or people who cannot afford that, so, so much of. They are trying to enhance the scope in terms of whole of the virtual reality scenario goes. But then can actual tourism industry and this virtual tourism industry can they combine and then some education aspect can also come in from there and then environmental awareness perspective can come from there and then rationalization of hotels or construction of hotels can be done because uh, we cannot go for unlimited construction in due course of time and we are feeling the repercussions as of now in hill areas and so on and pollution and uh, waste which has been generated by tourists and so on can everyone come together? It is not just the job of government to create policies and compliances which everyone should be following, but can everyone come together and that is how we should be rationalizing the development of tourism industry and developing the fruits of tourism getting converted into let us say education. Recently a movie has been launched which, which slightly is associated with this subject, uh, I am forgetting the name of the movie as, as of now. but. Uh, that that movie is the the protagonist the the main lead travels to france and from there he educates the children in the school on the french uh, you know uh, this is uh, world war 2 yes that, that 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 was a good way i like that basically so teacher is traveling around the world and from there teacher is demonstrating everything on mobile phones i don't know if my organization would allow me for this basically traveling around the world and talking about different management practices from there onwards so my mba class is sitting here or btech class is sitting here and i'm talking of different kinds of things from uh, it's, it's a good thought that some budget should be created on that i'll talk to the superiors so now you see as we have been talking on the elements of as far as the whole scenario goes so innovation in design for that matter so ikea let's say very very a uh, strong example in almost every sphere, but for as far as design goes. So, they brought in design innovation by bringing in their customers through co-creative activities easily assembled furniture and so on. Lego toys did it at, at large, several customers they are doing that. Uh, a milk dairy is doing that with their customers nowadays. I have been told that they are selling that at a very high price, I am not sure, but very, very high price, exorbitant price. So, um, I, I do not know if, if people like me, you know, they have the annual budget of uh, milk for that much, they are selling it per litre sort of, uh, I am not exaggerating. So, they have dairy somewhere in uh, Maharashtra, wherein, you know, they uh, have these cows which are best breeds and uh, their customers can see from on the camera on mobile phone streaming that how their cows are being maintained and that milk has been supplied to them in real time how they are being fed with organic food and so on so so that kind of a thing is being done by as far as milk supplies also goes so innovation in uh, promotion so l'oreal they they did that and uh, l'oreal innovated through promotion by introducing makeup genius app which was downloaded over 7 million times how many educational apps have been downloaded 7 million plus times probably people would have done that but again this is innovative if it can be done on as far as you know your appearance goes which is a very big industry and definitely why not then definitely it can be done on different kinds of accounts as well so it provided a real time pre purchase experience and brought in positive responses from the target audience people got to know how they would look after using this you know this this kind of makeup for example so, and then innovation in distribution, FedEx has a huge history of doing that. Uh, the other day I was talking to some of my BTEC students in one of my classes on innovation and there I was explaining this example of how they have, they have created a whole large fleet for distributing goods all over the world, how they have created transportation models, go-downs, 
how they have created you know methods of shifting heavy loads from this place to that place in the aeroplanes and how they are maintaining the logs and th those kind of things and excellent organizational development in terms of as far as innovation on the basis of innovation and marketing wonderful story and then they have several youtube movies and we should be visiting that and then some movies are made on such kind of organizations where and you know some some story is being weaved around uh, some real life incidents i am not sure that castaway had uh, fedex as one of the uh, you know backdrops as far as the whole scenario goes probably and, and tom hanks did a wonderful job in that movie so you know, one of my favorites so uh, innovation in price michelin for example now along with superior products michelin innovated their pricing by asking customers to pay for distance distance they would run or distance they run these innovations helped in creating a new avenue for manufacturing organization like michelin to stick out in the industry or stand out as far as the industry goes you see some innovation thought process that after all tire runs so actual distance should be paid for somehow if the vehicle is standing we should not be going for that kind of township where i stay in indian institute of technology rurki so many professors they everyone has a vehicle but there is no need of driving a vehicle except for moving from this place to that place which is denounced heavily in our environment because we are focusing upon green environment people look at me strangely when i drive my car so uh, that is the perspective of as far as you know the broader examples how things are ultimately what tire industry and automotive industry can do for people like me who do not drive much or don't have need of driving much are they thinking about me or they are just materializing their sales and i am happy that i have i am owning a vehicle and uh, regardless of i drive it or not i have to keep it shining clean so so are they thinking something about people like me or should i thinking should i be thinking about myself only that that okay if i don't use it so i don't i shouldn't be having a vehicle at all what is the context here and how many of such people are there and how many people are there who can't afford automotives and how can they be associated with public transport and somehow so public transport industry railway railways light rail transit metros and personal vehicle industry two wheel industry can everyone be thinking in unison and then engine manufacturers fuel uh, providers energy providers alternative energy providers tire manufacturers can all of these value chain partners come together in terms of thinking about the total output in unison and then rationalizing that with maximization of profits and gains and profitability should i say not profits with a motive of developing or or bringing bringing this world the fruits of prosperity serving society at large i leave you with this thought in terms of as far as uh, you know the whole scenario goes uh, a broader outlook in terms of innovations in marketing and i would be coming back to you with a context of need of this innovation need of innovation in marketing and several other elements sub, uh, in sequence from my next session onwards now i briefly switch over to marketing of innovations the context at this stage is that if we are bringing in innovations for example you know we are focusing upon product innovation but then it becomes a major question that how we would be actually marketing that innovation in due course of time that is a tough call and you would realize that this is the other side of the picture because whenever we say that innovation in marketing and i just talked about design and product okay we have created an innovative product but would we be able to take it towards the customer or customer acceptance can be brought in as against whatever customer has been using till now it's a tough call because if we do not address this portion then our effort of innovation in marketing gets undermined for example today we bring an alternative product in terms of plastic and plastic packaging and usage goes very simple example common example would customer be adapting that and how would be we be able to replace that thing the, the contemporary packaging material 
with that innovative material which is not environment uh, you know against environment or which is environment friendly you would say that as people adopted plastic the people would be adopting the uh, that material as well it will be a gestation period which we would go through and there is a adaptation cycle there is a whole lot of research associated with that no it is not that simple one of the case studies which i was reading from harvard business review this morning and i would be referring to that uh, with proper reference in due course of time that specifically mentioned that uh, you know the adaptation of television took 3 decades or so so the author talks about that and and uh, then several other things which which are so rampant and you know so commonly adopted at this moment took lot of time to be adopted in due course of time so it's a major question that if we are bringing in innovation in marketing especially with reference to product and designs and those kind of things even price and distribution methods also sometimes adaptation of communication also that we have started shifting over our modes of communication or methods of communication or perspective around communication people have stopped looking at those advertisements somehow so we have seen that so this is a major issue that how to take innovation to customers or market innovation so for organizations to remain relevant and successful innovation definitely is a top priority as the slide says and i am reading from you know these lines for briefly elaborating on those in, in due course of time so but it is vital that the companies should not just put their energy and resources in creating new offering but also into marketing the same as i said some alternative product comes in some substitute comes in how would you be taking that to people basically and sometimes i feel that this transition period is uh, perplexing for example somehow we went for ebooks so that adaptation has not gone into full swing and people have not gone for reading books on e mode but on the other side somehow hard copies we have reduced reading which is again not percolating the content as it should people say that people surf on google people find several answers on google one must not be going for as far as reading the complete text and book goes but look into the actual knowledge gain which you and me have been having in past one year or so simply and then you would have the answer and then talk to someone who is an avid reader on any mode and you may talk to someone who would have shifted from hard copies to soft copies you will find the difference and then many companies today merely use marketing as an activity to acquire and retain customers which has been historical and we have been talking about that though it is important that full potential of marketing can only be harnessed when it is used upstream in creating new markets and opportunities remember first session we talked about that the basic job of marketing is market opportunity development market development and that is where innovation in marketing and marketing of innovation comes into play success of innovations and major breakthroughs highly depend depends upon understanding people's fundamental needs and drivers which definitely marketing has been doing but then here the point is why would people shift from this side to that side one interesting example is that classroom education is shifting getting shifted to online courses today when we are talking on this platform wherein i am recording for you you would be listening to it then you would be appearing for exams you would be doing your assignments we would be responding to your queries it took quite a bit of you know an effort before we could do that and before you started liking that and still still we debate upon that if somehow you know we would be in front of each other but then we realized that this is convenient also and it's not actually very very necessary for us to be in front of each other all the time although it has not yet been completely replaced but this was a big innovation as far as online education goes and that definitely is bringing in fruits so thanks to nptel in india swayam in india that this has become big and very large so that is where you know uh, identifying customers developing the entire go to market and usage ecosystem focusing upon how customers would adapt and accept 
what we are bringing on board. Online education definitely is one of the platforms. I was talking to uh, you know the senior executives in this field who have been completely focusing upon online education and today we have come very far in understanding the needs of the learners. How well they retain their eyes on the screen for how long, what appeals them, what kind of backdrop they, they wish to go for, what kind of elements they want to learn, how uh, do they reconcile the purpose of the course with the demonstrations which are being made, so what kind of slides have to be put on and then uh, you know it is a, it's a continuous discussion we uh, also have amongst ourselves. My team members they keep on guiding me in terms of you know what learner would learner would understand easily and what would be difficult for them and so on. And then we can look at this with a broader outlook of three elements creation of innovation, communication of innovation and delivery of innovation. I have a beautiful example which I would be demonstrating all through in due course of time when we would be going sequentially ahead with this course Walt Disney wherein you would find that example apt for not only innovations in marketing all through, but marketing of innovation as such also. This organization went for almost everything which can categorically be talked about with reference to innovation in marketing and then taking the products and services and entertainment to the customers which wherein marketing of innovation can be aptly understood. There are several other examples for example, if you look at film industry, film industry has been continuously innovating upon. There was a time in 1920s if I am not wrong when silent movies were there. India also started bringing in movies you know at a similar kind of a time I am not sure about the year as of now you can surf about that and then you know and, and those silent movies you, you had titles associated with every scene. So, there is a shot and then there is a title and musicians and uh, you know uh, musicians to activate the scene around were also on the spot although that sound was not being heard of. Charlie Chaplin movies were very important contributors in silent movies and that was a huge entertainment and Charlie Chaplin has been a wonderful entertainer to this world in due course of time. Uh, uh, you know lot of learning was also associated with as far as those humorous movies goes. So, today also those movies are extremely popular and, and uh, if you will go to into the production process of those movies you would realize that it was a complex kind of uh, situation when these kind of movies they were being produced. There were no studios uh, synthesis was done you know uh, at a very specific location there were very specific people who knew about those kind of things there were no structured institutions focusing upon that. Today whole lot of a very intelligent team is uh, helping in this production as far as this video goes and people are sitting in those rooms and they are monitoring me and talking to me and speakers are there and uh, you know th they are monitoring every single step and then they are putting simultaneously on what kind of backdrops what we put in it is a whole lot of a science which has come up technology, learning, institutions, capabilities everything has come up. We have come up a far way in as far as movie manufacturing goes. Today we go for virtual studios wherein actor is standing and just making actions and then you can infuse the whole scene along with that in that particular as far as scenario goes. A wonderful journey from silence movies to talkies they used to say wherein they started infusing sound on the spot then infusing sound within the structure and so on and that took film industry from creation of innovation to communication of innovation to delivery of innovation. It was a tough call because it was not ready, readily adapted by people, it was not readily accepted by people in due course of time. But then creation of innovation talks about identifying unmet and even unknown customer needs talkies for example and technological development was going on uh, people never knew that. Then to understand the deep seated drivers of perceptions and behavior that are relevant to a product's appeal and you know these are larger inputs and communication of innovation wherein engage with customers through use cases and benefits instead of functionalities and features. There was a time when video based movies were more 
produced as because people stopped going to cinema halls then multiplexes came in and this was also a big change as far as the film industry situation goes and then delivery of innovation developing the entire customer experience ecosystem as i said multiplex tries to do that used to go to market strategy appropriate for innovation and its customers today they have recliners in cinema halls where a person can half lie and watch the movie and the soft drink and those kind of things those are being served there and then storyboard also is so elaborate that in that big on that big screen you have a beautiful switzerland setting or kashmir setting wherein you like that shot basically and that song is being played and you have that complete experience that you feel like being there as far as the scenario goes i would be opening up with another example very briefly in my next video before going to you know the structured discussion on need on uh, as far as innovation in marketing goes with a discussion on sports industry which has come a far far way but just to briefly suggest that at this moment i wish to uh, break that thought in your mind that we can talk about ipl and t20 matches a complete format change i would be going slightly on you know elaborated discussion on this for 3 4 minutes next time before i would be going for a structured discussion on other elements but then you see this changed the complete scenario india a cricketing country loved cricket since time immemorial i don't know since when i remember my father listening to radio intently and discussing it with with his office people he is a doctor so so everyone and he was so engrossed you know kind of every time we used to come back from school and winter especially matches are going on uh, somewhere in stadiums and radio is uh, switched on and you know he he is actually listening to uh, commentary and that commentary was extremely innovative providing a complete scenario in front of you how players are playing and how effectively they are doing that and so on and that then to television you know uh, these these clippings and uh, uh, live matches were not being streamed and then live matches came in and then story started and went on and on today cricket is entertainment today there are so many players so many companies so many matches so many owners and whole lot of an ambit in terms of so many customers have been involved so many industries have been involved television industry is involved relay industry is involved you know hotstar is involved live streaming is involved mobile industry is involved and what not i'd be slightly elaborating upon that next time as well but try and imagine that this innovation as far as the whole scenario goes innovation in marketing of cricket and then marketing of that innovation taking that to the customers having so many stadiums around and creating a format of bringing in people players from all over the world on board and creating a show just for 20 matches a serious show wherein players have become entertainers where this has you know taken this industry what which point and in due course of process how well it was adopted how much time did it take and what was the process through which customers were motivated to adapt it as a cricket format as against test matches or 50 overs matches and so on i would be talking about this and other few beautiful examples to emphasize upon the adaptation aspect of innovation or let's say marketing of innovation just to leave you with a thought have you ever tried thinking in terms of reducing the usage of your keyboard have you ever seriously focused upon adapting ms office 365 dictation software i have been motivating few people around me to do that for past one and a half year or so those people they have been debating with me on not using that this software is free for usage at iit rurki because we have purchased a blanket Uh, you know kind of deal with them uh, kind of uh, you know subscription from them anyone can use as far as the iit community goes and researchers around have to type a lot to put up and write papers one page typing requires several minutes and almost 800 words dictation requires only 
10 minutes. It is a difference of productivity as well as concentration and as well as output and as well as originality because when once you dictate similarity index is always lower. Similarity is always lower as far as when you try to match the similarity quotient or, or similarity at, at you know these kind of software. So, all the benefits are associated with the software adaptation, but I have found people especially around me not doing that at all. I will leave you with this thought, try and think about this, I will be joining you next time with lot many examples, till then goodbye.